You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is another episode on entrepreneurship, and I wanted to talk a bit more about employing people. Judd Weiss and I spoke about it in uh, my recent interview with him. Um, We talked about some of the difficulties um, and problems that you encounter employing people, particularly all of the legal stuff involved. But I did want to come back to the topic and talk a bit more about some of the considerations that come into play uh, if you are starting a business or if you are an entrepreneur uh, and you do employ people. Despite all of the bureaucracy and red tape involved in employing people that that, uh, makes it difficult it is still a really integral part of the experience of doing entrepreneurship and it's also one of the most beneficial things that you can do this is really the only way that jobs get created in the economy you know politicians often talk about policies that are going to create more jobs but when you think about it it's only entrepreneurs who actually do create jobs it's only if you actually make a venture creates new value and goes out and and brings value to to customers that you're able to generate new work for people and and this is something that you know can give people an opportunity uh, young people in the start of their career to learn new skills get involved in uh, increasing their own capabilities and give them an insight into a particular industry and it can give work to more experienced people give them the chance to actually practice their art and for, for yourself as an entrepreneur, it's an, a really vital aspect of growing your business. In most cases, you can't really grow your business unless you work together with other people. So I'd like to talk about some of my experiences employing people and some of the things that I think entrepreneurship teaches you uh, through the process of employing people. The whole field of employment really suffers from this awful uh, reward and punishment paradigm that infects everyone's thinking left over from school unfortunately this idea that relationships are about carrots and sticks they're about forcing people or manipulating people to do things and this all comes obviously from school where There is this huge power imbalance between teachers and kids who have to be there. It's a compulsory relationship. It's not voluntary. And I think it leaves over this idea that you can make people do things, that there are techniques for making people do things, and those techniques are around reward and punishment. And it also leaves over this idea of a massive power imbalance where, you know, the teacher is always considered to be right And your job is to get manipulated into doing what the teacher wants you to do. And, of course, you see that in government as well. You know, the government is considered to know best. Your job is to pay your taxes, whether or not you agree with what they're being spent on and so forth. Unfortunately, this idea also gets carried over by uh, both entrepreneur employers and employees into thinking about employment relationships and It really kind of infects the way that people uh, think about how to create win-win voluntary relationships with each other. There is also all of the legal bureaucracy around employing people. And we talked about this uh, in the interview with Judd uh, a couple of episodes ago. But that stuff is a huge disincentive to actually employing people because it really has a negative impact for you as an employer on your freedom to create voluntary relationships and it opens you to all manner of liabilities that uh, you may not have been aware of. Having said all of that, let's look at some of the things that you can do to make the experience of employing people as beneficial for you and for them as possible. One of the most vital things I think for getting a good experience out of employing people is understanding what it is that employees actually want. And the key issue here, I think, is that the focus on reward and punishment has made people very much focused on pay and on 
pay incentivization for getting the best out of employees. And what you come to understand when you do employ people is just how small pay is as a consideration as part of your overall working relationship with the, with employees. Pay isn't nearly as significant as I thought it was when I started employing people. It is important, but it's only one part of the things that employees want. And there's quite a good um, TED talk about what it is that employees want that I'll put in the show notes. But in summary, you can, you can summarize it as four things that employees want from their jobs. And indeed, what all of us want from our work, from our working lives. We all want a sense of purpose. We want to achieve mastery of what we're doing. We want to have autonomy and freedom. And lastly, we want financial compensation. So pay is in there. It's important, but it's only one part of the picture. And I think what's very easy is to focus on pay and ignore the other aspects of what people want and to miss out on finding ways in which you can actually compensate your employees through making their job more enjoyable, not just through trying to pay them more money. That's the typical approach is if you think that you need to make your employees happier, so to speak, then you just look at paying them more. Whereas actually, there's a whole load of other things that you need to take into account. So to go into a bit more detail about these other things, purpose is really about feeling like what you're doing matters, that you are doing something useful with your life, that the work that you do has some value in the world, that it's significant and that you're therefore part of something that you can believe in. So this is really about whether or not your employees actually feel like the company that they work for means something and is doing something valuable. That was really important to me because we had a pedestrian movement consultancy and we really tried to make it clear that what we were about was making the world a better place for people when they're walking on foot and about changing some of the ridiculously bad designs of pedestrian environments. And this is something that the people who did work for me in my business were really interested in and found really important. The second thing that we all want from work is mastery. And that is a sense in which when you work, you're able to really achieve a high level of skill and control and uh, self-expression through what it is that you do. So everybody wants to feel that they're involved in work, which is giving them growth and uh, greater skills and greater sense of effectiveness and capability. And through that, you know, self-esteem. And this, again, is is really important. If you're not aware of that, then you're going to miss out on chances to make sure that your employees are able to achieve a greater sense of mastery in their work. The third thing that everyone wants is autonomy. And this is really about freedom. I mean, it's about the freedom to get on with your work without being micromanaged. Everyone wants to have a sense of personal autonomy, autonomy, and respect for themselves so that they can just get on with their work. And the last thing is pay. And so pay is important, but as I said, it's only one aspect of the whole picture. I really believe that most people leave their jobs not because uh, pay is a problem, but because of these other things that are are a problem. And that's usually expressed in their relationship with their boss, that they're working for somebody who doesn't allow them an environment where they can have a sense of purpose and they can master what they're doing and they can achieve what they're doing and they have autonomy and freedom to get on with their work. So I'd like to talk next about the process of hiring people because I think that is one of the most difficult things to do with employing people. How do you find and keep good people? How do you actually hire them? There are loads and loads of videos and things on YouTube about hiring techniques and so forth. I'll tell you about my experience and and what I learned um, about hiring people. In my business, there were quite clear distinctions between different types of hiring situations. The first type of hiring situation is when you're hiring 
inexperienced people who are at the start of their careers, who you're going to train up uh, in your specific area of work. And these people are young and enthusiastic and cheap and are willing to learn and have much less baggage in terms of older ways of doing things. They tend to be uh, flexible about new technology and learning, learning things and so forth. And a lot of the employees that we hired in, in our consultancy practice were in this category. In fact, the majority of our employees were graduates who had studied something related to what we were doing, but in general were pretty much starting out, and we pretty much trained them uh, to use the software tools that we did and to undertake the kind of research that we did and, and so forth. The second situation is when you're hiring experienced people as independent contractors, as freelancers. I had a lot of really good experiences of, of this category of, of uh, it's not exactly employee, but you're hiring people. Um, and again, what they bring is unlike the uh, sort of graduates or inexperienced people, this category of people bring professionalism and skill and expertise and experience. And these people add a huge amount of value to your business, or at least they did to mine. And the professionalism, I think, really partly comes through the fact that with freelancers, they've already worked out what their sense of purpose and mastery and autonomy is. They come to you with an offer of what the kind of work that they envisage themselves doing, the kind of skills that they're are going to provide. So, for example, you may hire a software developer who is an independent contractor, and they might already have certain technologies that they work with and kinds of projects that they like to work on, and because this is how they feel that they're able to really work on something that they think is important and that they value this, this kind of work and so forth. So that's uh, another kind of employing people that, that works that worked really well for me. We had sort of the enthusiastic, inexperienced people who we hired as employees, and then we hired uh, a lot of independent contractors to do more skilled specialist work. Uh, the category of people that I found it most difficult to employ and that we never really had good experiences with was hiring experienced people as employees. So hiring people who are further in their career but who want an employment contract as opposed to being freelancers who work for a number of clients or who are independent contractors. I found that is much harder to hire well in this category. Um, and in particular, the difficulty there is in how you hire these people because one of the key things that I found in hiring people overall is not to rely on interviews there's loads of videos out there um, about you know how to interview people well and what to look for in an interview and you can buy books on this kind of thing frankly I just always found that it was really really hard hard to make good hiring decisions through interview and that's why I chose to simply not rely on interview wherever I could avoid it. So, for example, we had an internship scheme, and that was an unpaid internship where for the inexperienced graduates that we hired, they came and worked and trained with us for a month. And that is a long time to spend on an, on an unpaid internship. And what we found is that in doing that, we were able to devote a lot of time to training them in new software and new skills where they were essentially unproductive. They weren't, didn't yet know how to, to use, um, in our case, it was geographic information systems and databases and various other statistical tools. So we could devote time where they could get good at doing these things, but at the same time where they weren't productive and we weren't actually just losing money during that time, at the same time they got the benefit of learning the skills but we also got to work together with them for a month and you really find out a lot about somebody working together with them for a month and I, I mean I think in the time since then employment law has probably changed and you may find that you can't even do this kind of internship scheme anymore 
But for me, the, the important point there is that it wasn't relying on interview. And there were some people who started the internship who I thought were going to be great, who really weren't right for us and we weren't right for them. Other people who I didn't think it would necessarily work out, who turned out to be some of our best employees. So it just goes to show you that I, uh, I'm no good at uh, choosing people from interview. With freelancers, you can hire freelancers or independent contractors for a single project and you can get to see their level of skill and what it's like working with them, get to see how your working relationship is. And if you, you work well together, you can then hire them again for another project and you can start even hiring them sort of on an ongoing basis. Uh, so you get to find good people who are independent contractors quite easily through doing one project with them. When it comes to this category, this third category of people I talked about, which is experienced employees who aren't just starting out in their career but also aren't working at free, as freelancers, the really hard thing is you always have to hire those people through interview because they generally have a job already and they want to change jobs and move to your company. And so that is a really small amount of information about what working with this person might be like that you have to use as the basis of a hiring decision. And, you know, you can find lots of uh, guidelines out there about how to make the most out of interview, but frankly, my experience was that uh, I never really had uh, good experiences in hiring more experienced people as employees. We had great working relationships with people who we hired as graduates or as young and inexperienced employees. We had great working relationships with people who we hired as professional subcontractors or independent contractors or freelancers, but the in-between thing didn't work out very well at all. So my approach was simply to avoid hiring more experienced employees and go for the freelancer route. So having talked about uh, what it is that people want or that we all want from our work, and some of the considerations about hiring people, I want to come on to some of the things that entrepreneurship actually teaches you through the experience of hiring people. And this is where I think you really get a lot of uh, benefit, both for yourself in, in your business, but also for your wider life through the experience of hiring people. The most important thing, I think, is that employing people teaches you to take responsibility for your end in the relationship. It really teaches you that, you know, if you want to employ people and for that to work well, you can't force people to do anything. All you can do is take responsibility for your side of the relationship. So this is the opposite approach to that school paradigm of the teacher always being right and, you know, using punishment and rewards. In a voluntary relationship like employing people, you have to focus on what you can do to make sure that you're taking care of your side of things. And that way, you're in a basis to have a negotiation with the other person about what they're doing and how you're working together. So I'll give you an example. You, know, you have to take responsibility for defining the role and the responsibility of people who work for you. Uh, the worst kind of bosses are those who expect everyone to show up and then will sort of delegate individual little tasks without any sense for the person working for you of what they're doing. That's a surefire way to, to ensure that people don't have a sense of autonomy and mastery and purpose that we talked about. So you have to define the role and the responsibility of why that person is working for you so that they can then really take that on board, take ownership for it, and have that sense of autonomy and that sense of uh, purpose in their own work. And that forces you to be much more conscious about what it is uh, that you're doing as an entrepreneur and why you're hiring people and what those roles and responsibilities are. And you have to be much more explicit about your expectations, about what it is that you expect from others. And it forces you to take care of your end of the, the relationship in that you have to define the standards for what the work is that you do. I talked about this a bit in a previous podcast on getting more freedom in your job, but this is really about defining the procedures and the standards that you expect as a business to adhere to. 
And we did this through having a wiki that everyone contributed to, where we objectively defined how we do things and what the standards were for all of the analysis work that we did. But the, the key thing in terms of the employment relationship is that you're taking responsibility for being explicit about those standards so that then the people working for you can go ahead and have ownership of what they're doing and they know the context that they're working in. They can choose to, to work within that context because it's all explicitly laid out for them. You also have to take care of your side of the relationship by defining what success looks like. So in other words, you have to make sure that you have defined what the targets are or what the objectives are of the work that your employees are doing so that they will know whether or not the relationship is working out and they'll know whether or not they're actually fulfilling expectations in terms of what you've agreed. And this is really a fundamental difference to the old model of employees kind of showing up and then the employer basically disciplining them by, you know, that model way that you have the first chat with the employee when something not, is not going right and if they don't change then you have the written warning and if they don't take that on board and then they have the second written warning and then you fire them or whatever. Like that, that is all around sort of the expectation being on the employee to change without any sense of what it is that your role is as the entrepreneur to actually make sure that, that you have kept up your end of the relationship in terms of being very clear about your expectations and about what the job is and so forth. My experience is that the more you are able to take care of your side of the relationship, then the easier it is to have any discussion where thing, if about anything that's not going well. That if somebody isn't uh, meeting expectations, then it's, it should be fairly obvious to both of you because you have made it so explicit about what this relationship is about and what the, uh, what the roles and responsibilities and standards and targets and so forth are. I found a, a one book about this, which I'll put in the show notes, uh, which I found quite useful. There's a book called Discipline Without Punishment, and it's by a guy called Dick Grote. What a great name. And um, you'll, you'll see that in the, uh, in the show notes. But the, the key point here is you can't change other people. You can only take care of your side of the relationship. And in doing so, you put yourself in a much better position for... Um, negotiating and handling any difficulties that you have in in hiring people and employing people. I found that hiring people really fundamentally deepened my respect for individuality. I learned more deeply to respect differences in character and differences in preference through the process of hiring people than I had done uh, up until that point. Because I really found that there's a, a change in attitude that you have to adopt if you're going to hire people, which is you, you can't hire from the perspective of your preferences are what's right and you, you like, what you like doing is what's good. And so if other people don't like what you like, then they haven't got it yet or they just don't understand yet. That's... I'm sad to say that's actually the kind of um, unconscious attitude that I was bringing when I first started to hire people. And you, you, you realize that if you're going to get along and collaborate and cooperate and work together with other people, you absolutely have to respect their different interests and the different level of satisfaction that they get from some tasks or others. And this can be anything from whether or not people are prefer to be more client-facing or whether they prefer to be more back-end. Uh, it can be between whether people have much more of a focus on the uh, look and feel and design uh, and aesthetic of the products or services that you're doing or whether they're more interested in the sort of fundamental mechanics and dynamics of uh, of what you're doing it can be whether or not people are more interested in technical problems or more interested in people problems and you know all of these things are, there's no right or wrong answer in any of these things but it's a question of respecting what it what it is that's going to give another person more of that sense of mastery and 
more of a sense of autonomy that we talked about in terms of what motivates people uh, in employment situations. And, you know, it was actually, it was like a, almost like a light bulb moment when I understood, oh, everyone's different. They all get different level of uh, satisfaction out of doing different things because you, you can conceptually understand that, but when you get it, you know, in your bones, it, it's, uh, it sets you up for a much more respectful relationship with the other people that you work with. I found uh, in that sense that the Myers-Briggs personality questionnaire to be very useful. That's a, one of the most widely used sort of um, personality type questionnaires or tools and it's just a um, method or system of uh, describing differences in preference and differences in approach to work and life in general. And it, that particular book, uh, the book is called Gifts Differing, I'll put it in the show notes, helped me get more of um, a handle on thinking more consciously about different preferences that individuals have. But the, the wider point, I think, is simply that the, the experience of hiring people will teach you to fundamentally respect individuality a lot more. And I think the experience of hiring people also fundamentally trains you and teaches you to develop your sense of humility and your sense of kindness. In this way, entrepreneurship is completely the opposite to the school-type environment of punishment and reward because when you're in a voluntary relationship, you know, when you're actually really living the voluntary relationship of... Uh, employing people on the free market. You can't make anyone do anything. Employees can leave at times when it doesn't suit you. And freelancers can decide that they don't want to work for you uh, because they've got a better paying project. And this can happen at any time, and it does happen all the time. So, for example, we hired someone to be our office administrator after a lot of difficulty in filling that role and finding a lot of people who just weren't right for the role or we weren't right for them. We finally found someone who was great and who was the best office administrator we ever had. And, you know, she, she was just fantastic at, at her job. And she left relatively quickly, I think about after about a year, because she got an extremely high-paid job in the finance sector because um, she was an extremely capable person. And, and, you know, that's something that you have to accept that if someone is really good, then they're going to have a lot of other opportunities. This encourages you to really be as kind and generous to them and find ways of being kind to them that you can do uh, because you want to keep good people. One of the best employees that we ever had was making a huge impact on the company and doing a lot of uh, really innovative things in, in, the way that, in designing systems for the way that we work. He went off to do... Uh, further education course at MIT uh, at a time when you know he was really integral to, to what we were doing again that's something that you just have to accept and and with freelancers too you know I had freelancers who were really good one who was actually a friend of mine a software developer he doubled his his uh, rate uh, because he was simply able to get so much more work in the marketplace the more experience that he got we had to accept that because he was really, really valuable to us, and I had to accept that um, if we wanted to get our software developed by him, we would have to compete with other people who also were willing to pay him a lot. In this way, I think hiring people as an entrepreneur teaches you people skills that are valuable in your wider life, their life skills. That experience of hiring people and in voluntary relationships, you, you really learn that you can't make anyone do anything and that all that you can do is take responsibility for your end, that you have to respect differences in character. And those are all you know, really valuable things to apply in personal relationships as well. As you learn to get better in hiring people, you more fundamentally take on that understanding of respect for others' autonomy and a respect for finding win-win solutions. You know, the more respect that you have for the fact that you can't change other people and that you can only take care of your end of the relationship, as, you, as we talked about in terms of employing people, the more you take that on board, the more you can apply that, I think, in your wider relationships in life and have a fundamental respect for other people and take responsibility 
for your own side of things. So I hope that that is helpful and I'm really interested in any thoughts that you have or any experiences that you have in employing people and thoughts about this subject. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.